So very good morning one and all. So today we are going to start on with another new topic that is methods of project appraisal. So in methods of project appraisal, we have two methods of project appraisal. The first one is generally termed as traditional method and the second model of methods is modern methods. So today we are going to discuss what traditional method is and what are the traditional methods which are used in project appraisal. Okay, so coming to the traditional method. So traditional methods are generally termed as non-discounting methods of project appraisal. Okay, why they are termed as non-discounting methods is because in traditional methods, time value of money is not taken into consideration. Now, so what is the meaning of the sentences? Here, traditional methods assumes that rupees 100 invested today is rupees 100 even tomorrow. That is, whatever money you have today will remain the same even tomorrow. On that assumption, traditional method is generally based on. So, there are three traditional methods of project appraisal. So, the first one is urgency method. The second one is payback period method. And the third one is average rate of return method. So, coming to the first one that is urgency method. So, urgency method is a method where project is selected basically on necessity. That is on the basis of necessity or on the basis of requirement or on the basis of need if a project is selected it is generally termed as urgency method that is those projects which cannot be postponed those projects which are highly needed will be selected under urgency method clear so urgency method is when a project is selected on the basis of requirement or on the basis of need or on the basis of necessity it is termed as urgency method and the advantages of urgency method is it is simple because no technical assumptions or no technical analysis is generally needed and the second advantage is when you have lesser investment and when you want to undertake short term projects this method is generally useful because the detailed analysis is not at all required and the disadvantage is there is no scientific analysis because need is the basis of your selection there is no scientific analysis and the second disadvantage is economical consideration is not taken into consideration, not taken into account. That is, under urgency method, whether return is generated on a particular project is not at all considered. You are generally taking into account the necessity. Profit is not at all considered under this method. So that is the second disadvantage. And coming to the second traditional method that is payback method. So, payback method is generally the most simplest of all the traditional method. Why in the sense, in payback method, a project is generally selected or appraised on the basis of payback period. Okay, so payback period means the length of time a project needs to recover its cost. I am repeating it. The time required for a project to recover its cost is generally termed as payback period. Let me give you an example. If an organization wants to purchase a machine costing 1 lakh, there are two options available to the organization. Machine A as well as machine B. So when the organization wants to purchase a machine A, it will generate three types of return. That is in the first year it will generate 50,000. In the second year machine A will generate 50,000. And in the third year, machine A will generate 50,000. And if the company opts for machine B, in the first year it will generate 30,000. In the second year it will generate 40,000. And in the third year it will generate 60,000. So here, in order to select machine A or B, what the company does is it will generally use payback period. So payback period means the length of time an organization generally takes in order to cover its cost. So the cost is 1 lakh. So this 1 lakh can be covered within 2 years if you opt for machine A. That is 50,000 plus 50,000 you can cover your 1 lakh. Whereas project B or machine B generally takes 2 and a half years. That is 30 plus 40 is 70. 
still one lakh has to be recovered from the third year. That is, it takes two and a half years to recover from machine A. So, how will you say it? So, machine A is generally taking lesser time than machine B. So, machine A is generally selected. So, when a project is selected, on the basis of payback period, that is the length of time required to recover the cost, then it is termed as payback period. So, how a project is selected is, the project with the shortest payback period is generally selected. And coming to the advantages, it is generally the simplest method because you have to look only into the payback period. And the second advantage is, it is easy to understand. You may not belong to a finance background or you may not belong to an accounting background. No background or no educational qualification is generally needed in order to use this project and use this method. It is easy to understand. And the third advantage is, if they are short term projects requiring lesser investment, then this method can be actually applied. That is the third advantage. And coming to the disadvantages, it ignores the time value of money. That is, it will not give consideration to time value. That is, it will not assume that whatever you invest today will increase tomorrow. It is on the consumption or on the assumption that whatever you invest today will remain the same even tomorrow. So, it will ignore the time value of money. And the next one is profitability cannot be measured. So, here a project is selected only on the basis of cost recovery. Here, profitability is not at all considered when you are selecting the project. So, that is the second disadvantage. Clear? And let's go on to the third method that is average rate of return. So, average rate of return. Under this method, a project is generally appraised on the basis of the average rate of return. And this information is generally taken from the financial statements of the company. Clear? So, under average rate of return, a project is generally selected on the basis of the financial statements of the company, on the basis of the financial information obtained from the financial statements of the company. So, here a project is generally selected on the basis of average rate of return and this average rate of return is generally obtained from the financial statements of the company. And those projects with higher average rate of return is generally selected. So, how will you calculate average rate of return is? Average annual profit after tax by average investment into 100 will give you the average rate of return. So, these information that is annual profit and average investment is information is generally obtained from financial statements. So, under this method, a project with the highest ARR is generally accepted. And coming to the advantages, generally it is simple because all the information from financial statements is taken and you are implementing the project. And the second one is, takes earnings over the life of the project. So, under the first two traditional methods, you are not considering profitability of a proposed project. But under the third method, earnings or profitability of the project is considered and then the project is selected. That is an advantage. And the third one is, when different, you have different projects to be selected then this method is suitable because on the basis of profitability, an organization can select the best project. That is, projects of different character can be compared and the best one can be selected by using ARR. Clear? And coming to the disadvantage, even average rate of return ignores time value. Okay? And the second disadvantage is, it is based on accounting profit. That is, on the basis of financial statements, generally a project is selected. You are not taking into consideration cash flows. That is a disadvantage. And the third disadvantage is rate of return is taken into consideration. But the life of the project is not taken into consideration. That is what is the return a particular project generates throughout its life is not taken into consideration in average rate of return. So, these are the disadvantages of traditional methods. I hope the class is clear. Thank you.